this is Gypsy from Broken Barbie TV with a new review for you all today. I'm going to show you a doll house that I recently obtained courtesy of my husband's wallet foundation. Thank you for your support, sir. Before we start, 한국에 계시는 my Disney stuff 한테 특별 인사 하고 싶습니다. Hi! Yeah, my Disney stuff is all the way in Korea, so I had to do this shout out because us Koreanas gotta stick together, right? <laughs> So let's get on with it. Now this is the box that we're looking at. The brand is Our Sweet Family. This is available at Walmart and probably online someplace. The retail price for this eight room, two story house is $50. But my scavenging husband found this in the clearance aisle for a whopping $20. No kidding, that's like the price of an average articulated Barbie or two fashionistas. Yow! Now listen, I don't collect these things to play with and I don't buy this stuff for my children because my daughter is unruly and she's too destructive for this kind of toy right now. And my son, eh, he's not really interested in doll houses, um, even though he does play with dolls. So we usually just craft his stuff because he likes customized things. So this house is going to be used as a set for the Broken Barbie show. I could not keep the bright purple and pink color scheme that it came with because I don't know, I just don't like those kinds of colors. So I decided to custom it by spray painting the walls and floors into neutral colors. I chose cream, black, and a textured brown paint. So here is a quick look at some of the stickers that came with the house. You're supposed to attach these to the walls so you can have a 3D furnished look when you're done. I don't want my furniture to be flat, so to give it a 3D effect, I'm going to end up using these stickers to create some props to go inside the house. I will show you what I did in a little bit with the clock from the first page, the dresser and the mirror, all these outlets and light switches, the sink, the mirror, and the microwave and the stove. And these are the floor stickers, tiles for the bathroom, and a colorful rug, but I'm not going to end up using these in my set, so I'll just put that away for now. Alright, let's have a look at the completed customized house. It's on my dining room table, and you can see how large it is. It's about 4.5 feet long all the way across the first floor, and the height is about 3 feet tall. I changed the roof from purple to black, and I think it turned out pretty good. I changed the pink floors and walls to these neutral colors that you see as well. The inside walls separate four large rooms into eight rooms by acting as dividers. My paint job was a little bit blotchy on the walls in certain spots, but that's okay because it's the first time that I experimented with this process and I needed more coats of paint. This is good enough for me right now, so I'm not too worried about it. I suggest that you guys use more than just one coat if you decide to do something similar. I only use three big cans of spray paint, but I think I should have used more. Okay, well I'm not that picky, so moving on. It comes with a staircase that goes up to a landing. I did line it with some fabric to make it look carpeted. I feel like it would look cooler with a railing at the top or along the stairs, but it wouldn't be that functional because you would have to keep reaching over the railing when you play, so mm. But it would look neat though. My biggest complaint with this house is that the walls make the space a lot smaller to play in. So you have to use small furniture and your dolls have very little room to move around in it even though the entire structure itself is quite large. I love big spaces and I'm kind of weird. I like project my claustrophobia onto my dolls. So um, if that bugs you like it does me then you can actually just remove those walls. They snap into place, but they don't have to be there in order for the structure to be stable. So you don't really need the walls inside this house. Eventually, I am going to take out the walls and make custom walls to open up the rooms. But this is a very functional house for multiple players to enjoy from many angles without bumping into each other. And I'll show you how the house looks with custom furniture and props inside. Alright, so I've lightly furnished the house. Now you can get an idea of the scale and the size of the house. Uh, in reference to the dolls. This clock was part of the wall sticker that came with the set. I cut it out and I attached it to craft foam and glued it to the wall. You can attach your wall pieces any way you like. I did the same thing with the outlets. It was a sticker too, which I cut out and attached to craft foam. Here's the 
here's my wine rack in the hallway. Here is my new doll. This is Honey Blackburn. She's a 2015 Birthday Wishes doll that I got from Walmart on sale for only $11. I didn't do a review of her, but you can see her pictures on Instagram. Um, I, I customized her a little bit so she could have some articulation. I decided to see how the room looked as a nursery. I did a review of this nursery set, so you can go ahead and watch that. It's a vintage 90s one. I made the end tables that you see here. And here's the siding on the outside of the house. This is going to lead us to the opposite side of the house where you can see the bathroom. The house came with some tile stickers for the floor and the walls of the bathroom, but I didn't end up using them. I made this walk-in shower to save some space because the tubs are bulky and wide. The curtain can be removed to close it. The washing machine dryer and the toilet came in a $5 set that was made by the same company that makes this dollhouse. I got those from Walmart too. I customized the toilet a little bit with a piece on the inside because it was hollow and open and I thought it looked weird. I also added craft foam on the back to close it up. The only thing about this toilet that annoys me is that the seat doesn't stay up on its own because the handle protrudes and keeps it from staying upright. The mirror was part of the wall stickers that came with this dollhouse set. I didn't put a sink in yet because I need to make a new one for this house. It has to be very small and narrow to fit properly in the house and have room for the dolls to move around in. Here's the kitchen space. I used the stickers from the dollhouse set to create these furniture pieces. The fridge is from Mattel. Um, so all I did was I used boxes to make these pieces. The stove was a mini fridge from an RV, but I turned that into a stove with some storage space in the back. I also made this rug here. Of course, you can use the stickers that the dollhouse came with to conserve space and to give the illusion that the house is furnished. Here's my dining space. Ariadne is sitting eating some fattening snacks here on the table. Um, the table was part of something else, but I took it apart and made it into a dining room table and I made the chairs from cardboard and fabric. So let's go around to the front again to try out the stairs in the hall. Oh yeah, here's an idea of how tall the dolls are inside the house. The hall's ceiling is a little lower than the other rooms. Okay, a railing here would look really cool. Maybe I will make one. Here's the upstairs hallway. You can turn it into a room too. On the other side of the house, you will see it leads to a bedroom. I made the bed and the bedding. The dresser was made from a sticker that came with the house set. And the lamp was handmade. The nightstand was customized from another $5 furniture set. So that's pretty much the whole house. I'll tell you something cool that I found out about this. These houses are available in many different configurations and even bigger than the one I got. In fact, you can get two or three and put them together like Legos to create these looks. It doesn't have to be exactly the way you see it here if you're good at that sort of thing. It's not a space saver. This house takes up a lot of space. I suggest you place it in a designated play area instead of a kid's bedroom because there might not be enough space in the kid's room for this, but it is hella fun. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will give you an updated tour once I finish customizing it because I do plan to remove the walls and make the rooms bigger and add some custom furniture to this house. So let me know what you guys think. Is it worth the retail price of $50? It was easy to put together, the instructions were easy to follow, and the only tool I needed was a screwdriver. I will talk to you guys in the comments below and be sure to follow me on Instagram for more detailed pictures of this dollhouse. Please subscribe, because I said please and that means I'm a nice person and now you have to do anything I ask you to do. Share this video with friends. And shout out to Mandy from Rockin' and Barbie. Check out the page and get to know the members of our wonderful YouTube dolly community everyone. That's it for me. I'm gonna go and until we meet again here on Broken Barbie TV, this is Gypsy and you better have a dolly day. Tame to bayo, annyeong!